Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel, a Bears podcast by a Bears fan. I'm your host, Terry, and today we're talking about the case for Vita Vea at number eight. So let's look at the landscape if we were to pick Vita Vea at number eight. First off, on our returning roster, we have Akeem Hicks, a uh, uh, merging superstar on our defensive line that had an amazing season at defensive end. Um, then we got uh, Jonathan Bullard, one of our younger uh, picks who's still on the team. And then we got Roy Robertson Harris, another young player who's just kind of scratching the surface of his ability. And then at nose tackle, we have Eddie Goldman returning who had a healthy year and actually started playing really well. And then that's kind of it as we're losing one of our starters, Mitch Unrein, who is a unrestricted free agent, has some injuries this year. And then we got Jonathan Jenkins, the backup nose tackle that we brought in, is also an unrestricted free agent. So really looking at what we have right now, we got Akeem Hicks, uh, Jonathan Bullard would be your two starters, and then Eddie Goldman. And then Roy Robertson Harris, who's more of a pass rusher uh, on the third down. So bringing in Vita Vea, what does that do for you? That allows you to uh, plug him in as a starter at potentially the defensive end position. Now, most people look at him. He's 6'5". He's 340-plus. Wait a minute. He's a nose tackle. How is he a defensive end? That's what makes Vita Vea one of the top players in this draft is that he is extremely mobile and quick for his size at 340 pounds. Now, I don't know if you know too many people that are that big, but a lot of them aren't that mobile. So this is what people are really excited about, the natural elite strength, but also the athleticism. So if we wanted a bruising, run-stopping team, we could definitely put him at the defensive end. Now, you're talking about maybe can Eddie Goldman do that? I think he's a natural nose. I think Vita Vea is a natural nose, but has some plus-side talent as which you could do that. So that allows Jonathan, Jonathan Buller and Roy Robinson Harris to be the more pass rushing specialist to be on the field, uh, in those situations. And again, Mitch Unrein is somebody that people really want to bring back. Uh, they like his veteran leadership and, uh, his ability to play consistently. And the thing for me, I think Jonathan Buller, When healthy, show some flashes again. I think this isn't the right system for him. He has an amazing get off though. And Roy Robinson Harris showed with his length that he's able to pass rush. I think maybe you give Buller and Robinson Harris some more leeway this year to uh, show that they can play. Now, getting Vita Vea allows you to do that as you can let Mitch Unrein walk and you can, uh, you know, again, add another starter and allow these two to be more situational pass rushers uh, instead of having one of them step into a starting role and try to do everything. And then, of course, Vita Vea, um, you can move him around like a chess piece within that interior, depending on what you want to do. So as far as the landscape, that does provide some depth to you that provides another big body on that line that's really going to allow those linebackers to flow and uh, would definitely step in as an instant starter. So let's talk about the cases for Vita Vea and against. So number one, when you're talking about the case for picking Vita Vea at number eight, is you have to say that he's one of the top talents in the draft. And when when we get to the draft, a lot of people talk about best player available and talk about needs. And there's a balance you got to strike. Some people feel one way or the other. But I think at this point, most people tell you that the Bears need to add talent no matter what position. We got to add blue chip players. And so while people will say Bradley Chubb's the top pass rusher, there's some people that think Vita Vey is just one of the top three players in the whole draft because of his natural athleticism and his, oh, I'm sorry, his, his natural blend of athleticism and uh, strength with his uh, production on the field. And so even though you might say, okay, we got needs here, here, putting talent on the roster is something that uh, a lot of people are looking for. 
And then another case for Rita Vea, as I kind of mentioned earlier, is that he provides depth because he can be a true nose tackle and he can be a defensive end. So while him coming in as a starter allows the other two guys to be situational, if there were to be an injury anywhere on the line, Vita Vea could step in and plug that hole. So uh kind of like we talked about with the offensive line, Vita Vea uh, comes in and really provides depth for two positions because now he could be a nose or he could be a defensive end. And so that type of versatility is really attractive to teams and it might be attractive to fans who think that, you know, again, we had one of the worst injury bugs last year. And so that might be attractive to fans who think we need to have insurance policies across the board. Now, what's the case against Vita Vea? Number one, I would say anybody that kind of really watches is that he isn't a pass rusher. And while the defense is pretty good or whatever, we definitely understand that pass rush is pretty valuable. We already um, have a run stuff in team. The Bears ranked number 11 in total rush defense, and that's by average yards per game. If you talk about average runs per carry and touchdowns, whatnot, we're at 11, 10, tied for 10, tied for 9. We're right in that area. So we're a top 10 defense when it comes to the run. And so you bring in a guy like Vita Vea that doesn't have outstanding pass rushing ability. And my personal evaluation, the only time he provided pressure is in a lot of stunts and loops and blitzes and games. And that's not something the Bears do. Uh, we definitely blitz and whatnot, but I don't think we play a lot of games with our D-line every um, every play. And so you're asking a guy to get pressure on his own, and that's not something that he does well. So we're talking about potentially bringing in a number eight pick that doesn't give us a pass rush, and that's going to leave it to a guy like Jonathan Bullard and a guy like uh, Roy Robertson-Harris. And so the question has to be that do we want to spend that high volume pick on somebody that's going to stop the run when we already got a lot of run stoppers? And then um, the other case against uh, picking Vita Vea, as we already know, um, the defense is ahead of schedule. We need offensive weapons. And so that could be talked about with any defensive player. But I think overall, uh, people look at it and say, well, the defense is on its way. Again, a top 10 defense. They got the pieces. Do we need to add the cherry on top? Do we need to add frosting to the cake instead of adding the cake? And so that's the question um, that a lot of people have that, yes, we might need talent anywhere, but maybe I want to push more towards our needs instead of just taking the best player available. All right, so those are my thoughts. I would love to hear what you guys think, of course. Go to comment section. Tell me what you think about picking Vita Vea, who is considered one of the top players in this draft. Would you want to take him at number eight? Do you think we're already good enough in the front seven to let that go? Or do you think bringing in Vita Vea will be something that will only help the team and help the coverage and everything else because he's devastating on the line? Go to the comment section. Tell me your thoughts. Like, thumbs up, subscribe, share it around, and remember, stay up and bear down.